Hey everybody, welcome back. So we're going to continue building on what we had before, um, which is a little bit more basic closure script using a reagent shadow CLJS using Emacs Insider as the dev tool. And this is what we had before. We just had this little um, uh, using Tailwind also as our um, uh, for styling. Uh, so this is our little application before. I want to point out that this was, I was reminded of this, that the reason that every time I reload this is because I'm doing a def for the atom, because when I change the page here, it reloads the namespace. Um, if I just do a def once, or def once, however you pronounce it, if I could type, stop, okay, good. Kill that. And now, if I make a change in here, you know, whatever, I'll just make that change, um, save it, and notice it doesn't change that before. I'm, I'm going to change it to, back to a def for now. What I'm also going to do is I'm just going to get rid of, or maybe I'll just comment that out just so we don't take up the real estate for it, but it'll be, it'll, we'll leave it in there just for reference. Um, so what I want to talk about here is um, a little bit more of why I really like Closure script, Tailwind, Reagent, all these things come together nicely. Um, so what I'm going to do here is come back to my terminal. And well, actually, before I come to my terminal, we'll go here into um, package JSON. And notice I have these scripts, TW, to run. It'll literally run NPX Tailwind build from the source to the destination. And this one, um, and I had to install the on change package, which I think I added as a dependency. Yes, I did uh, since the last time, which will run the, um, it'll watch this folder for CSS. So it'll keep rebuilding any tailwind changes. We're going to do some tailwind changes here today. So I'm going to say npm run uh, watch CSS. And that's going to be running. And I'm just going to drag this off to somewhere else so it doesn't clutter um, the window that we're looking at. So what we're going to do here is let's go back into here. And let's say we wanted to have some input. So that's easy enough with the hiccup syntax. We could make um, uh, an input. And we'll say a type equals text. And, you know, fine. That's, that's good. And what we could do here is we could say um, let's make a label. And we'll say this is going to be to get your username. And let's just put this all into a div. And I will use um, smart paren slurping for that. And um, OK, so it's going to put those on different lines. That's, I guess, well, it's, uh, I'll have to slurp the whole thing into the div. And let's add a little bit of a margin. Let's add a margin, too. Let's see what that looks like. Padding one. Um, there we go. Let's let's get rid of the padding to see what it looks like. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's put that back. And why don't we add um, border two? Make a little border there, and that's going all the way across. So why don't we say we'll make a width of one six? Now that's not going to work because of the slash in one six. So that's where we have to kind of go to the keyword thing. So we'd have to have a class of width one six, um, and that works a little bit better. Um, maybe let's make that one fourth. Not sure why that's going on to the same line. Uh, that closes the div, that closes the input, that closes that. Um, one half, okay, one third. Okay, fine, that, that looks reasonable. I mean, I, we're just trying to do stuff here. Um, so one thing we can do is, um, that's great, that's our input, and if we want to make this um, uh, basically, you know, do something with our data, what usually we'll want to do is we'll want to tie this input field to some variable in our state. So uh, we can do this in a few ways. Now, let me see if I have any other atoms. I only have that one atom right now for the counter. Um, so why don't we make an atom for a username? And what some people like doing is they just like making one state variable. Uh, you know, so that'll be def state, and then it'll be an atom. And then in the state, they'd have like, you know, the counter is zero, uh, the username is whatever, you know, and they'll have a dictionary in the um, 
in this one state variable and everything will go into that. I've seen other people make individual atoms. Um, you know, I've got mixed feelings about it. Uh, since right now we're just kind of not at our end state yet, we're just going to make another atom up there. And what we'll do here is we'll say, we're going to tie this in. Let's, um, let's move this over. Like right now, if we look at this here and we look at the atom username, and notice I changed my namespace into, well, let me change back to namespace main. Um, and I look at at username. I looked at username and that was just the atom and username itself is just username. Okay, so now um, why don't we do a little, um, why don't we do stuff with this? So let's, uh, let's move that down to there just because, let's move that down. And let's say here, we'll say on change, what we're going to do is we're going to reset the atom username. And um, what is it again we need? Okay, I don't remember this. So I'm gonna look at another project of mine. Uh, so we'll go to GitHub. And um, Org Explorer, because I know I did it in this one here. And, and this is a little Electron app uh, that I wrote. Um, so uh, that's under core. And I had here, let's look for on change. So it's this magic incantation. Get rid of that. Boom, bump that in. Uh, fix our parentheses. And that should do it. So what we're doing here is we're using the threading macro. So we're going to send in the parameter which this on change gets, which is the event. We're going to then get its target of the event, which is the input box. And then we're going to get its value. So now if we look at our username, it's nothing. But if we put into our username, I'm the user. we get I'm the user. So we've now linked those together. All right, so now we can start talking about, um, you know, uh, a few things about here. It's like, well, we have a username, but ultimately we might want like a login button. So we're gonna also want a password. So we're gonna want to have this whole thing over again. And that's gonna get kind of busy. And it's gonna get kind of busy on a few fronts. One is we keep reusing all these classes here, these Tailwind classes. And the other thing is that we're using, um, we're also reusing the, um, you know, we're, actually we'll leave this for now, but we're also, eh, no, no, we'll change it. Um, we're also doing most of this is boilerplate for this entire construct where we have a label and an input together. So let's first deal with this stuff here. So let's get the, take this, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna knock that out, and we're gonna go into um, the Tailwind style, and between components, whatever, we're going to make an input box our own class and it's going to apply we're going to apply these and since now we're not doing closure script we're just using regular CSS we're just going to add the Tailwind classes that we want um, that is all of them now Tailwind just rebuilt it you know the watch rebuilt it so that's all good and now if we reload our page here or rather, if we come here and we save this, we're going to lose a bunch of styling, um, even if it looks right. You know, we lost our styling. But if we now add the class of input box, now it's all back. And so now we can just reuse that. Now, the other thing that we can do is we can factor all of this out into our own function. And this is, again, this is where it's like, I like this a lot better. So let's make an input box. And what we'll do is we'll give the input box, into the input box, we're going to give it three parameters. We're going to give it a type, we're going to give it a label, and we're going to give it an atom for a variable. Um, so now, this is going to be our label. If I could type. Um, we're going to reset the variable here. And the type is going to be type. And um, we have a mistake somewhere in here. 
Where is our mistake? Um, Def n, uh, input box, type label var, div input box, we have a label which gets the label, we get our input which is that, um, we're closing one too many there, so that's good, I think we accidentally screwed things up here, yes, we, um, we cut one too many over there, but now we can say, give me an input box, using of type input, of type text, with a username, colon, space is my label, and my atom is going to be username, and bang, I've got it. And if I look at my username, uh, it has nothing, but if I add the user, I've got the user. And the beauty here is, I can now just make another one for a password, And we'll come up here and we will add another atom for our password again for the time being. We'll clean this up in a bit. And all of a sudden we've got that and we can have, you know, the username and the password. And we can have password at username. Beautiful. So this is so clean. This is like really... Um, we don't have to deal with this like, okay, we're, you know, how do we do our substitution for the JSX or the template language? It's, a, it's, just, it's just ClojureScript. Um, so let's clean this up a little bit more. Um, the nice thing here is we can just make the password field a password field. And now, you know, I'm just typing random characters, but now it's, you know, it, uh, let's use a we get it as a password field. So we're in pretty good shape here. Um, and notice again, so we, we can use the tailwind to pull things out. But in addition to using tailwind to pull things out, we can also just use, you know, closure script, refactor it using closure script. And so there's one more thing we're going to want to do is let's change this again. And let's factor this out. And let's make, uh, let's make a login box. And so here we can just say we want a login box. And a little problem there, uh, because um, it's only returning the last thing. So uh, uh, this is a function, and the function will only return one item. So it's going to evaluate that and then evaluate that second one, but then it only returns what that returns. So we've got a, uh, let's put that into a div. And we're back again, and let's make a little button. So let's make a button, and let's say, press me. Okay, let's style that a little bit. Why don't we say, um, background blue 800. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, text white um, M2 uh, P2. Uh, rounded, rounded large, uh, rounded, I think, full. Yeah, I like to make it rounded full. And um, why don't we make it um, hover background teal 400. I don't know. I'm just making this up. Um, not hove, hover. Uh, background teal 400. There we go. Okay, now um, notice again we're getting these really long guys here. So we can we can do we can do a similar type thing as we did before. Let's go to style CSS and why don't we make a button blue? And we'll apply. And, you know, this is not necessarily the cleanest way. If you go to the Tailwind documentation, it'll talk about, you know, it'll give you better recommendations for this. And particularly the hover um, is so I can make, uh, I think it's hover, or rather it would be a button blue hover. 
and that would be at apply that. I think this is how I write it. Let's see. Um, let's save our button so we've lost it, and we'll make it a button blue. And it looks like that is not quite right. Oh, yeah, okay, there we go. We got that back. And so there was something wrong with the button blue hover. Let's see if I have to reload this because it's, uh, maybe it's hover button blue. Or maybe hover button blue. Okay, so I'm not sure about that. So what I'm going to do is we could look it up, but I don't want to take the time. So I will basically say on hover, this will be background teal 400. Do that manually. Okay, good. Um, so now all of a sudden we've got this box. Um, but what we want to do is we want to gain access to its state. So we can say here is on click. What we're going to do is let's just for the time being, just let's print username and password. So now, and let's scroll down here. So if we say this is a username, I'm the user, and this is my pass. And if I click on this, um, well, we're getting user and pass. So we're getting exactly what we want here. Um, but I'm not really happy with this because we're just kind of grabbing the state from the middle of nowhere. Now we can do that, but I'm not overly fond of it. Um, so what I've been doing instead, and again, if, I guess if you just keep one global state object, you can do that. So here's what I've been playing with recently. What I've been doing is like, well, let's in the login box, let's just do some local state. So uh, let's let username, and that is going to be an r.atom with nothing. And let's make um, password, which will be r.atom with nothing. Um, and the whole thing will be here. And we've got some mistakes in it. Um, user aim. Username, okay. So now we've got these as local um, stuff going on in our function. So now it's like, I am the user. And, you know, it's good that I did this because, you know, you use, use my, my real password here, uh, which you can see is um, one, two, three, four, five, which is, you know, I obviously use on my luggage. Um, so anyway, we're almost done with this um, because, again, we, we don't want to also mess with our state down here. So what I'm actually going to do is one last step for today's video. And I'm going to go back to my, um, my event handler, and I'm going to make a, uh, a login event. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to um, print the payload. Just to, you know, because we don't really have a real application here. But what we're going to do here is on click, we're just going to put onto the event queue. And we're going to put the two parts. The event is going to be um, login. And the payload is going to be the value from the username atom and the value from the password atom. So now we've saved that. And so now it will be um, president screwed and one, two, three, four, five. And now when we click on that, um, did we get the event? No, we did not get the event. Um, so why not? We had a little mistake here. Um, So let's figure this out. Uh, put onto login, print the payload. Uh, so let's see. I'm just going to move this down so we can see things a little bit better. Um, No, that should be okay. 
Um, did, oh, well, we didn't save it, first off. That's a problem. So let's try this again. Uh, so president screw, one, two, th well, one, two, three, four, five. And we did not. Okay, so little problem. So what are we messing up here? Um, let's just make sure we're doing our basics right. Let's clear that and let's just do an ink one here. Ah, pearls of live coding. Um, so we got that as an ink one. Um, we messed something up here. Okay, so let's see, that closes that. That, no, oh, okay, got it, okay, so let's clear, let's, let's, so we got open parens, okay, open, close. That closes the put, but that's supposed to close the put, that closes there, that closes the button, that closes the div, that closes the let, that closes the def n, let's see, Okay, so that's working. So now we want to actually do login, and we're going to, for our login, we're going to say at username and at password. Okay, so let's see if our handler is no oh, good. Um, Our handler should be okay. It is a login event that should be okay. Um, login event that should be okay. Um, let's just print hello. That should be okay too. So this is kind of odd. I can't figure this out because um, we are uh, when we. And I'm looking for where we are here. Um, when we do the when we did the other events, um, if we come over here to our events and let, let's just totally reload everything. Let's just make sure uh, we're reloaded. And let's, um, when we look at our event queue here, um, we're taking something off the queue, okay. Um, we're getting the event in the payload. Ink does this. Deck does this. Print, uh, login should just do that. And in fact, colon login, okay, colon login over here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the video for a minute so you know you don't get bored watching me for this. And I'll see if I can figure it out and then come back, okay? So I'll be back soon. Okay, so I'm back here and I switched this back to username and password. And as we'll see here that we have um, uh, president screw and and this does not work because I didn't make the final change here, but I, I saw my stupidity. Um, you know, and this is this to, for beginners out there. And um, you know, even though I'm new to these technologies, I've been in the coding game for a long time. And it's amazing how you know it's kind of like when you write an essay when you're in school and you proofread it a hundred times and you just read the mistake over and over and over again. So same thing here. So this is correct. I'm putting on the event queue the the um the event and its payload but you'll notice up here um i'm doing it as an anonymous function there that's returning the function um instead of just actually doing the printing of the payload so now when i hit that if i let's come over to here where are we here let us save this. We have to save it. That's another issue. So now if we have president screw and one, two, three, four, five, and now when we click on this president screw one, two, three, four, five, each time we click it, well, we, yeah, there we go, multiple times through that. So that's pretty much it. And the, what I like about this is 
I'm maintaining my state inside of, um, you know, inside of this component. Um, and when I first did this, I thought I was going to have to do this with a closure, but this seems to work. Um, but you'll notice here, we're able to abstract it out. Just give me the login box. It's got everything it wants. And then when we're ready to do something with that stuff, we'll just put the data onto an event, uh, onto an event. So that's the basic idea. This has been a little bit long, about 25 minutes. Uh, so we're going to stop this at, at this point. What I think I'm going to do is we're going to make another video. Um, the next video I think I'm going to do, I think I want to talk about routing a little bit, which I'm just starting to figure out. Um, and then we'll do an electron one with a few more down coming down the pike since people seem to respond positively to this one. So I'm just going to quickly um, I don't want to stage any of those, but uh, yeah, might as well stage all of that and um, um, finish demoing uh, factoring out components. And we will push this up and um, and that'll be it okay so uh yeah so that's it um thank you uh let me know if um you know if uh, there's some idiomatic ways of doing um you know dealing with the state like this that's better than what i've done um, i'm just figuring it out as i go along but uh, in any event i hope this uh, gives people some tools to get started and to build and play with all of this all right so i'll see you the next time